It's officially console week, so you're going to be seeing a lot of content regarding the PlayStation 5 and, of course, the Xbox Series S or X. I have the Series S in this video, uh, so I just want to say real quick, uh, if you have come to my video curious about my thoughts on the consoles and whatnot, this is new territory for me, so I just want to give you my gratitude that you came to my video, and hopefully you enjoy my perspectives on all of this stuff. And bam, there it is, the Xbox Series S. Let me just put this up to the camera right now and point out that I was really just kind of floored by how small this console is. But before I get too ahead of myself, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Here is an unboxing of the Xbox Series S. Okay, so throughout this video, you're going to hear a few little disclaimers from me. Uh, the first one, which I'll give right now, is that I kind of bought this console on a whim. When all the pre-orders were happening, I already had the PS5 pre-ordered. I'm looking forward to looking at that and playing games on that in the next couple of days. But when it came to the Xbox pre-orders, I saw everyone talking about it on social media, uh, and I just decided, why don't I give it a shot? So I went over to Microsoft.com, and I told myself I won't try too many times or else it will be a waste of time, and like five Five tries in, my order went through. Seriously, I was really surprised by that. Uh, and sure enough, it's November 10th and this console has made it to my doorstep. So that's me unboxing it. I actually didn't follow the console news a whole lot, so I wasn't fully aware of just how small this console would be. Uh, I knew I was going to get a PlayStation 5, but this was on a whim, so a lot of what you're seeing here is actually very fresh to me. Not to mention the fact that this is the very first Xbox that I have ever owned. I've barely played Xbox games, most of those games end up on PC anyway, and I've been doing a lot more PC gaming recently, but as far as Xbox is concerned, I've always been Team PlayStation. This is my first foray into the Xbox world. Now, the rest of the experience is also fairly foreign to me because the Xbox controller is here, of course one is included, and it's different for me because I'm used to DualShock controllers. There are two things about DualShock controllers that are quite different in terms of ergonomics. Number one, they're usually a bit smaller, and then number two is the placement of the analog sticks. I'm sure that I'm going to need a bit of an adjustment period, but I don't foresee that being too long. After that, it's just the power cable and an HDMI cable. I originally wanted to put this series as uh, just a bit behind my television standing up. Uh, that's because I wasn't sure if it would fit in the various areas that are around my television. By the way, the TV that you're going to see here is going to get upgraded uh, because I need a TV that is over 1080p resolution, not to mention the fact that 120 uh, frames per second can be possible depending on the games that you're playing. But as I was getting everything set up, I thought about it a little bit more and realized if I lie it down, it will actually fit in the space underneath the television. And this is, again, another reason why I'm actually kind of floored by the size of the Series S. I mean, it makes a little bit of sense, right? We can go through a little bit of the specification sheet here. Uh, basically, this is supposed to be the console that's made for your digital gaming. There's no disk drive on here, no more physical copies if you get this console. Uh, and instead, you get 512 gigabytes of expandable storage. Uh, that way, you just download all of your titles that you buy. I feel like we've been getting really used to the idea of digital copies on our consoles over the last few years. I mean, if you play on PC, it's pretty much all digital anyway. If you're on a Switch, you can have all of those copies on your SD card, and it might just be better from a user standpoint that if you do need to change or replace your console, you can at least get all of those titles back uh, because God forbid you lose the physical copies or damage them. But then there's the setup, and this is yet another place where everything was just so fresh to me. One thing that I really enjoyed about the setup is the fact that I could log into the Xbox app using any smartphone, in this case the iPhone 12 Pro, and I was able to get it set up that way. It also goes to show you though that the advancements that we have in general everyday consumer tech actually bleed into these other, let's say, slightly more niche categories. And of course, the fact that you have an application that allows you to control your console also means that I could probably buy games on the fly, let the console download it while I'm not even around it, and it'll be ready to go once I come back. Other notable aspects to the setup include the power up modes. Uh, in the power options, you can have the instant on there so that you can get straight into the content as fast as possible. But if you go for the other option, which in their words is more eco-friendly, uh, then it will take like 45 seconds for the console to boot up. In my case, I went with instant on and coupled with gamer zoom, I should be able to get back to where exactly I am in any given video game pretty quickly. 
So I'm finally in the Xbox dashboard. And by the way, these are all terms that I'm learning like right now as we go along in this whole process. I'm in the dashboard looking at what I could install, what I could play, also fiddling around with a few different settings. The first thing that I want to do is install Assassin's Creed Valhalla. That's the most recent game that I know I definitely want to play on the Xbox. It was easy enough to find that with a search. There are a few other games I kept in mind. And then as I was going through the list of games, I noticed that I already had Game Pass Ultimate and it was showing me games that I could install already. This was kind of where I had my aha moment because the Game Pass is one of the most compelling reasons to even be part of the Xbox ecosystem. It's one thing for me to have Game Pass Ultimate to actually do Project X Cloud uh, and to do game streaming, or uh, even better, I could use Game Pass on my PC and install quite a few of the games that I would want to play anyway, like Forza Horizon. But the library for Game Pass on Xbox on console is actually incredibly impressive. I was looking through the entire list and I was just pointing out all of these games that I know I want to play. Tekken 7, Thronebreaker, and now EA Play is part of Game Pass Ultimate, so another game that I really love on PC is available as part of my subscription, Jedi Fallen Order. So just like that, I already claimed and started installing like seven or eight games, taking up about 200 gigabytes of the storage immediately. On that note, I do wanna just say, I know some people think 512 is a claustrophobic number, that they're going to fill that up with not just games, but so many forms of media immediately. If I look at this series as, as just a straight gaming console, uh, well, I don't think I'm going to fill it up too quickly because if I'm, Focusing on one to three games at any given time, uh, then it's not going to take up a whole lot. And when I'm finished with them, I'd probably uninstall or archive those games anyway. But enough of all of that, let's get into some actual gameplay. Again, I'm going to have a bit of an adjustment period with this Xbox controller, uh, but it's been easy enough for me to get into Assassin's Creed Valhalla and start enjoying it. I'm only getting through the first part of it because it's not done installing at the time of me playing it, uh, but it's nice that you're able to start it up after a certain amount of the data actually gets installed. Not to say that part is very new to me because it's obviously happened on plenty of games that I play, especially on PC, but I'm just saying it was nice to be able to do that. Now, one thing that I will note is that when I unplugged the Xbox Series S in order to do this video and have it here for the uh, for the camera, uh, I already had it off for a little while after playing like an hour or two of Valhalla, and it was pretty warm. I'm not too sure if it's going to get any worse than that. I'm not sure if it's even going to be a problem, but I just thought I would mention that. What I will say though is that the graphics are expectedly great. While the specifications don't allow for the Xbox Series S to do more than 1440p resolution, that should be more than enough, especially when I get a higher quality TV to take advantage of that. I'm only playing at 1080p right now, despite how large my TV might be. For somebody like me that has a ton of stuff to do and I can't even game as much as I would want to, uh, the fact that I don't have to worry about physical copies or I can just download the games onto this powerful little console, uh, it just makes things more convenient for me when I can actually play. So after just a few hours of playing around with the Xbox and literally playing a little bit, um, I'm starting to really get how Microsoft is creating this little ecosystem. And for those of you who are big fans of Xbox and really swear by the Game Pass, I'm starting to really understand it as well. Let me know what kind of things you want to see from the Xbox Series S and coming up the PlayStation 4. I also got the digital edition of that, so you can look forward to my coverage or my videos on that uh, coming soon. I'm picking it up literally in a couple of days, and because all of the digital copies will be easily on the actual consoles, um, I might actually do some gaming videos again. We'll see what happens. I've been uh, really wanting to do them, but I can never get really consistent with them. Let me know what games you might want to see me play over on my YouTube channel, JV Plays Games. The link is appearing above and it's also in the description below. Uh, you can also just drop a like on this video at the very least and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. From there, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody.